Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Hey folks, howdy! Welcome to Miami Dice. Today we're taking a look at Legacy. Uh, this is, a, the, I'm sorry, it's Legacy, the Testament of Duke de Crecy. The Duke de Crecy. Uh, that's what, I don't, I don't know. Okay, this is from Portal Games. It's coming out next week, actually, at Ooh. Essen Game Fair. It is a game about building a family tree, and um, Portal Games aren't usually about that. You know, there's usually, there, there have been the Naroshima Hex universe, you know, mm -hmm. right. uh, the Futures War 51st State, yeah, you know, right. the... And the other game they have coming up this year, the Theseus game, is a big sci-fi game also, so that that's more in line with their usual style. So, yeah, you're right, this is a bit of an, an, an anomaly. Right. Now, do we like it? Stay tuned. This is the main board for the game. On this board, you have a spot. These are children cards, which you'll be using. There's mansion and uh, venture cards and missions, contributing to the community, acquiring a title. Here you have a pile of friend cards. And over the course of the game, these are friends that you are going to be trying to uh, marry off to your kids or the different generations. Each of these friends has a profession here they also have a nationality, and they have a special ability. Uh, they will bring you different benefits. So this friend here, for example, brings you one income every turn. And when you get married off to these, when you marry them off, uh, many times they will either require payment or sometimes they will give you dowry. You can see here that when you marry her, you get a coin. Uh, when, you met, when you marry off and you get McWell in your family, you, you have to pay three coins, etc. Each player has a player board of their color, and you will be tracking two things on your player board. One thing you'll be tracking is how much income you will be making, and another thing you'll be tracking is basically how much prestige you have or how much honor you'll be getting. The game takes place over three different generations. Each generation is made up of several turns. Um, so there's two turns in the first generation, three in the second and four and a third. At the end of each turn, players will be getting income. That's what these cards are for. And I don't think they actually, I would have included more cards for income, by the way. Uh, it just seems like there's just barely enough. But anyway, uh, each turn you'll get income after the end of each turn. And after the end of each of these uh, phases, you will be scoring points or honor based on how much honor you get from your player board. Also, you'll get honor for each child that you have. So the more children, the more honor. Now each player is going to start with basically the patriarch or the matriarch of their family. You'll get a card and you can decide which one you would rather be. There are some benefits and disadvantages. You can see, for example, that starting with uh, the female matriarch here, you have six friends, start with one income, and you start with eight coins to begin the game. And you get the special yellow action token. If you start with him, you have six friends, you have two income, but you only have five coins to start the game with. So there's differences. So whichever one you start with, that's who you're going to have. And as the game progresses, as I said, you're going to be marrying these people off to friends. And so you will be able to choose from your hand who you want that person to marry. So um, one of the actions that you'll be taking over the course of the game is marrying someone. And another action that you'll be taking is having children. Now, when you marry someone, you automatically have children and you will draw the top card of the deck and place it underneath them. Each couple can have up to three children, although there are special cards that get around that. Someone can have four children. There's uh, twins that can be born, surprise twins. And every time you have a child, you put them the child face up. At the end of a generation, these children will all grow up. 
and you'll flip them like that to show that they've grown up. Sometimes when you're drawing from the, the child pile, you will get a child that has a special ability. Like for example, this woman here has a beautiful smile. Each time you ask friends for money, you get an extra dollar. So you're using your daughter, I guess, to get an extra dollar. You can also draw a complication at birth card. When you draw one of these, that there is no child born. Or, you know, you can draw another child, but in that case, you would have to lose the mother. Hey folks, Tom Vassell here, and I want to take a moment to talk about this part of the game. Um, the designer actually emailed me about this uh, game, uh, part of the game, the complication at birth, because he knew what happened to me. Uh, if, if you don't know, my wife and I have lost I've had several complications in childbirth, uh, including the, the death of my son, Jack Vassal. We, we started a Jack Vassal Memorial Fund. When I first heard that this feature was in the game, I was kind of flabbergasted because this is a, a very sensitive topic to lose a child, and it really can bother a lot of people. And if that is something that really bothers you, you have two options. One, obviously, is to not play this game, but the other, the designer told me, you can take these cards out of the deck, and it affects the game minimally. Um, and so I was a little concerned about it, not because I was worried that I would break down crying in the middle of a game, but I was worried that I would feel odd hoping that when someone else drew cards, hoping that they would draw a complication card, and you know, this seems like an odd thing to wish on somebody else. So I was a little concerned going into the game. Now, having played the game, it, I don't know what it is, it doesn't bother me. Um, it was a historical fact that these happen quite a bit, which is why they put it into the game. Um, I, I don't know. Um, it, just, it just was a game mechanic in that sense. Uh, thematic, but for some reason, it, it didn't cause me traumatic stress. But I do want to mention that this is in the game. Uh, for those of you who it may uh, bring some concern to. And I really appreciate the designer went out of his way to reach out to me and explain why he put it in the game and also, you know, knowing of, of my situation. Anyway, back to the game explanation. Now each game board has two sides. This side here is for the solitaire game. There's a solitaire game to see how big you can get your family. But the other side is what you would use over the course of a regular game. And each player is going to start with two action tokens of their color. And on each round of the game, you'll be placing these action tokens on different spots, uh, doing whatever that spot says. And you can also place them on the main board. Now, these spots here, when you socialize, that's a way to get more friend cards. You'll be drawing them from the five face-up friend cards in the middle of the table, and you have to pay money. Or you can take, you can take one for free, pay a coin to get two, pay two coins to get three. You can also ask your friends for money. If you're running out of money, you can always take two. You can beg, but when you beg, you lose an honor. And if you really beg and you want four dollars, you lose an honor and you lose a friend. You can also marry or arrange marriage for one of your upcoming children. And you can have children. You can take one card from the child deck for free, or you can say, I want a boy or I want a girl, and you will draw until you get one of those, but when you do that, you lose an honor. When you place these in the middle of the, spot, in the, middle of the board, there, if you notice, each of these action spaces is color-coded. At the beginning of the game, each player will start with one action that matches a color spot. You can only place it on that spot, and when you place it there, you lose it. You can keep them during the course of one whole generation, generation one, generation two, generation three, and at the beginning of each generation, you get a random one that you can use. And there's also cards and friends and things that will provide more of them as the game comes by. But your own color, you can put on these. Now, when you put one on the ones in the middle, no one else can put one on that spot. So these are pretty simple spots in the middle. Buying a mansion increases how much honor you get for each, uh, each uh, generation. Initiate venture increases your income. And both of those are... You know, you have costs for those, like when you buy a mansion, you lose a friend and you pay three coins because your friend is jealous of your new digs. And when you initiate a venture, you lose two friends in an honor because you're working and people look at you and go, what are you doing? You can hire a fertility doctor, which lets you draw two of these cards and you lose a friend when that happens. <laughs> and two, because of the shame. You can get a title. Each one of your couples can have a title and you would pay the costs on the title. Like you can get count here, which makes you lose two friends because they don't, you know, when you move on up, you got to lose friends. 
and pay for coins, but then you get your income is increased by one and your honor increased by two. And you can also do contributions here, like this can give you a lot of friends, a church donation, but it costs money to do that. Or a feast, give me four points and a friend, but again, three coins. So the, these cards will change from round to round. There's round one, round two, round three, and they get progressively better, giving out more points as time goes by. You can undertake a mission each of these missions you turn over, it has a requirement, like for example, the mission I just turned over here, you have to pay at least, you need to have at least two of a certain profession, your family scientists, you pay one coin to the bank, and if you do that, you get three points, keep the card, and for the rest of the game, I treat it as if that was a generation, that was, this was a scientist card. Now this matters because at the beginning of the game, each person will draw a secret goal. John Paul Jones or Benjamin Franklin, these are a patron that you have. Um, John Law, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and each of these guys has a victory points that you will get at the end of the last phase. So for example, Jean-Jacques Rougeau here gives you two points for each different occupation of your family members in Generation 3. He also has two secondary goals. The only way to get a secondary goal is to undertake a mission in the last round of the game, and you don't do the mission side, you just stick it under this card, which lets you activate one of the two uh, secondary goals, and if you take two of them, you can activate both of them. As the game progresses, you can see your family tree will grow larger, starting from the couple, then there'll be generation one, I mean, two, generation two, generation three, and generation four, which doesn't really matter so much, but sometimes matters for scoring. And like I said, you, you'll be marrying people off. You can arrange a marriage uh, between two people. And so at the beginning, let's say this was at the, in the middle of generation two, you have this young son here. You can arrange a marriage between him and this lady. And as soon as we start the next generation, he grows up, they immediately get married and then have a child uh, as a result of that marriage drawn from the deck. And so there's other rules. I didn't go over every single detail, but that's enough to give you an overview of the game. All right, well, legacy. Okay, components. They're decent. very nice, they're very nice. Decent, I would say decent. Well, functionality is very nice. Yes. With the components, you know? Yeah, it wasn't, it, there wasn't like anything that was difficult to tell. No. I thought the people, the only thing that I would argue was difficult is you, you're constantly, when you're taking the friends, you need to right. see what friends they are. So if you're not sitting right in front of them, you need to pull them, look at them. Because right. it's really important that you get the right friends. Right. You right. really want the ones that will help you out. Yes, yes. <laughs> but the artwork I really like. Uh, it's, 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 nice caricature. By, it's, yeah, it's caricature. It's caricature. Yeah, it's caricature. And it works. It works for me. It doesn't make the game feel uh, heavy, you know. Right. It, it makes the game light. light and, and move along. I don't know. It just It's it's almost a psychological thing. But it makes you go, all right, yeah, I'm going to build a family tree. Right. Um. But I thought the board that every player gets, that works really well. Because it is, you know, once you understand what's going on, then it's it's clear what needs to go where and how things work. And then the main board is color-coded for action. And when yeah. you get an extra action disc, it makes sense. I can play this only there. It, 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 the design was aesthetically pleasing, but the component quality wasn't over the top. Sure. Well, I would say it was over the top, but for this kind of game, I don't expect much more miniatures True. and all I that. Mean, you're basically just dealing with wooden discs and cubes and cards. Right, right. I mean, that's it. So that's what I'm saying. The component quality is decent. It's not, wow, but it's also not, ugh. True. You know? Okay, so, uh, yeah, and I did like the artwork. The artwork was really cool. Um, the one thing I really didn't like about the game, game, uh, the layout, though, was that how you had to lay out your whole family tree. And I know it... See, I disagree. I thought that was cool. Oh, it is. I like that it no, goes no, out no, that okay. way. It's a, it's a cool idea, but man, does that take up a lot of room. I mean, you've got to have a big table for a four-player game. Right, right, right. Okay, that's true, but that's kind of a warning. I mean, you oh, play a game cool, with a big okay. board. Well, that's fine. Warning, call it whatever you will. Minor nitpick. That's really the only... I, I guess that's the worst thing I could say. Well, let's move into the theme then. What'd you think about the theme of the game? See, I was when I brought this out, I knew that Sam was like, I was like, Sam, we're building family trees. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although Sam's strategy is the vassal strategy, I've noticed. I have tons of daughters. And largely enough, it didn't work. <laughs> didn't even come <laughs> close. It's like, here's didn't a girl. Here's two girls. Ah, well, it's actually, I mean, that's just a random flip of the card. Yeah. But, but that's that's one of the nitpicks, another nitpick that I have about the game. It says that it's about making the family tree and all this other kind of stuff. And that's really what I did. Uh, the, the the last game that I played, right. the, we I had the biggest family. 
bar none. Well, no, but the, okay, but the game's not about making the biggest family. It's about making the most noble family. Okay, whatever. <laughs> right, right, right. <sighs> okay, but um, but this isn't normal your style thing. No, it isn't. Or mine, really. Really? No. Yeah, this is not typically my style. See, of I really no, like this theme, though. I thought it was a cool theme. I thought I wasn't sure I was gonna like this game at first. I. Looked at the cover. I looked at the theme. I was like, I yeah. Well, know. The, the cover isn't this really seems really Euroy. You know, this seems like it's going to be a real Euro style kind of game. I wasn't sure, and that's not to say I don't like Euros. I like plenty of Euros. It just seemed like it was going to be a really heavy, involved uh, move cubes and stuff around kind of game. Right. You know, and it's not. I I, I yeah, didn't no. get that feeling. Mm -mm. I was, you know, building my family tree, which at first I was worried would be convoluted to understand where we were, but it made sense. Uh, taking action, still worker placement game, and it's not even a, a convoluted one at that. Mm -mm. You know, everything makes sense. The actions are not, which I despise in games. They are not take this action to they to then take this action to take this action to then actually do what you wanted to do in the first place. I hate that. You take the action and you get what you wanted to do in the first place. I like that. In know? fact, I like the fact I like the fact yes. that when you married somebody, they instantly had a kid. Boom. So you didn't have to that wasn't separate actions. No, no, I know. No, there would be, I know you think it dramatically. There would be designers who you marry them and then it takes like six things for them to have a kid. Like you right. have to take play the action. take a date card. Yeah. You know, take yeah. them out to like, eat. You know what I mean? Then after four of those, you get to have a kid. <laughs> right. And so I like that. It, it's you can feel that the game was streamlined. They took care to streamline. Right. I also thought there was some very humorous jokes on the children cards as time went by. Oh, this kid here is an ugly child. Yeah, <laughs> this, ugly this is the uh, right. they have a beautiful smile. Yeah. This girl has wide hips. It was just really funny the the things that they said <laughs> on the cards. <laughs> so. Um, I, I think that this theme will have a wide appeal because mm -hmm. it's not making fun of any mm -hmm. any specific gender. No. I mean you have I mean no, girl no, no, in no. this game girls are just as valuable as, as, as the boys to have them. Right, right. I mean depending feel, on the cards in your hand. Yeah, the <laughs> right. game does not feel sexist or anything like that, right? No. no I mean, absolutely. granted, it's certainly in a different time period. Right. Mm -hmm. Um and you know, but I think that the the game now this is a, certainly a game of escalation. Mm -hmm. The first round, you're like, ah. Oh. The second round, it's like, ah. Oh. And the third round, it's like, I need to score as much as possible. Right, right. Oh, I should have been scoring my bonus card. Yeah. So, real briefly, what are your thoughts? I, I don't think you were as keen on the whole final scoring thing. Well, I wasn't, but it was only because I didn't have a real keen understanding of of, of how my bonus card scored. So, you're thinking this is a, a game that will take... Um, that, that you should go into your first game and just automatically expect it's going to be a learning game. Yes. Oh, sure. Yeah. I, I, I mean, there's... There's a lot of games out there that have to be that way. Well, right. No, and I, I understand. But I think, I think understanding how the game works, you will know that after the first turn, basically. Right. But understanding as to what your end goals are, that takes longer. Yeah. Well, I like the fact that the game gives you both short-term and long-term goals. Yeah. Which is one of my favorite things in games. I hate yeah. games that don't have end game scoring, and you can see the train coming. <laughs> you know, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to lose in two turns, but i got to sit here for another 15 minutes. I like that. But there's in-game scoring. I like both of those. And so this, I think, did it well. There's not too much end-game scoring where you feel it was all up in the air anyway, mm -hmm. but there's some hidden scoring. As a matter of fact, I think the guy, the, um, the, the guy that won our, our most recent game won because of his short game scoring. Right. Right, not right, the right. end game right, scoring. Right. And that's well, no, right. but I, I think I think it's balanced. And I, one of the, my biggest enjoyment of this game is I like the fact that the theme fits the mechanics almost flawlessly. When you're explaining to it, you say you have a kid. Mm -hmm. You know. Now, I mean, and it, it, it lends itself to a lot of uh, sort of joking and role playing around the table. You know, like oh, my friends, uh, you know. I'm letting go of these friends because I have a nice place now. You know, and that, that sort of joking. Right. With but, the, but, but, I, have, I have new friends. Yeah. But, right, but that made <laughs> now sense. Now I have a title, excuse me. That's you know? what I'm saying, though. For <laughs> once, that made sense. Yes. To, you, why are you discarding friends' cards? Because your friends will leave you when you get new financial status. And stuff. Right. Right. That was a really cool mechanic, I thought. Mm -hmm. So, final thoughts on the game and thumbs. Um, I really like it. Again, I was scared at first that I was not going to like it. Uh, because it seemed really euro -y, but it's the kind of euro I like. I like it. It's got an original theme. 
and it has some original mechanisms in there, which is very nice to see. So I'm going to give it two thumbs up. Very nice game. And you? I'm going to give my uh, my my uh, ranking will be two aristocratic noses up. Is that good? <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I'll give it one quill pen up and one strapping young son-in-law up. Little boy who looks like a girl a little bit. <laughs> That's right. He's got big curls. Well, he's cute. Okay, but I... For me, the strong point was the marrying of the theme to the mechanics. I really enjoy when it happens in a game. And I also think that this will have a wide audience. It's not so... I am concerned that this cover will turn people away. Right, but you're watching this review, so but, don't! It's a but, really dry get, cover. Get, get past that, check this game out. All right, so Legacy, the Testament of who? Say the name again. The Duke, Duke the Creechy, Duke the Creechy. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>